Hello everybody, I am Brian Mullins the Fox. Welcome to the first series of its kind, purely and honestly, historically accurate, and nothing else. Except for the series rant near the end for each. Welcome to the first series of 2024, and the first multi-series of its own kind at that, called Christmas Dinner. This is Series 1, or Pre-Roast Game Edition. 1900 to 1997. This is all pre-recorded, pre-premiered, and prepared. There will be brief tangents here and there when it's interesting enough. The framing of each historical time period when it comes to Christmas dinner will be mostly in a historical time period sense. Where did these quote-unquote traditions come from, you might ask? Most of these modern Christmas dinner quote-unquote traditions claim or somewhat tangentially associate them with some dubious connection to history, dubious at best, fabricated at worst. We're not going to be proverbially driving down the same avenue that my 10-hour-long Christmas video essay went down back in 2022. The very idea of traditional Christmas dinner came along around the same time as Thanksgiving dinner in America. But even Thanksgiving dinner has a longer history even at that time. But again, these quote-unquote traditions, or so they call it, is local or regional, not national. Pretty much all of these 19th century Christmas dinners, unlike Thanksgiving dinners, were mostly, or if not all of which, were for the upper class, or the rich. But for the common middle class, or lower class citizen, or family, they were either just shit out of luck, or just go with normal dinner instead, instead of going after those fancy meats they like so much, just like the rich does. To quote an insider article, the 19th century was when the modern Thanksgiving dinner meal began to take shape, thanks to the republishing of pamphlets and historical records from the pilgrims of the first Thanksgiving celebration. And Hale's tireless advocacy, Hale also frequently published Thanksgiving recipes in her magazine, Goaty's Ladybook. Before America was even founded as a nation, the Victorians of England were the inspiration for many in 19th century America. Originally, the turkey was reserved for only the upper-class citizens, or even just the riches of rich people. And no, we're not talking about stuff that happens in books like Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, or even characters like The Scrooge, though that would make just a lick of sense, because it isn't fair for you to be the only one to fully acknowledge just how selfish the upper class truly turned out to be. The same presumably went for the earliest Christmas dinner era in 19th century America, because the way competition began rolling out in the general population of both America and England were characteristically the same. That's how and where they got the first concept of traditional Christmas dinner from. Victorian England. All religions told the same old stories about birth, but everything is different. Ham wasn't introduced as a competing centerpiece meat until around 1900, though the numbers of hams consumed and wasted during the pre-roast game era doesn't even begin to be covered until next episode. Let me point out that competition is the reason why ham started to become a more chosen centerpiece meat choice over turkey among the middle class and even lower class citizens, mainly for the South southeast and the great plains while roast turkey was more reserved for the midwest northeast northwest and southwest and even then and there there were more options there was roast lamb beef and even roast chicken as alternatives heading into and throughout most of the 20th century the reasons for this competition was very simple. There are only two of them. Number one, competing with the upper class or rich will invoke more and more people to do the same. And number two, nobody is entitled to become rich and elite to enjoy traditional Christmas dinner with their own families, nor should they have to. 1900 was when roast ham had been introduced, which is still the last year of the 19th century. The reason why ham was introduced as a competing centerpiece of Christmas dinner at the beginning of the pre-roast game era, was never based on any biblical or religious story about sacrifice. Those that say so contradict the book they so feverishly idolize as a guise of overarching morality. What also arose in 1900 is food waste. So as a mere coincidence, food waste became a thing in the same year that ham was introduced as a competing centerpiece of Christmas dinner back then in the pre-roast game era. Americans 
We're changing the way they store, preserve, consume, and even waste food forever. Refrigerators and freezers became more and more common as an appliance than any other time in American history. So was the invention of trash cans and other dinner items being added to the table in the pre-roast game era. And all the other stuff about how the wasted food gets destroyed or not incinerated anymore. Now before I end this episode and begin calculating the consumption statistics, waste statistics, and even going as far as to report prices, I will tell you all this for 100% certainty. There will be five competitive centerpiece meat choices throughout the pre-roast game era, 1900 to 1997, three of which would only be stunted and cut short due to the lack of competition in 1960, that being roast lamb, roast chicken, and roast beef. Here they are in chronological order. Number one, roast turkey. Number two, roast ham. Number three, roast lamb. Number four, roast chicken. And number five, roast beef. Consumption statistics, waste statistics, prices, and other statistics will demonstrate the gradual monopolization of centerpiece meat choices as decades go by. Based on the U.S. population statistics, availability of such data for set statistics about everything else, and how meticulous it'll have me be throughout this entire multi-series. Not just this series. But until the next episode comes rolling around, I'll see you all in the next episode. I'm Brian Mullins the Fox, your delightful host, signing out. See you then.